Hello Strategic Social Media class. Here I am again with a quick video uh, to just give you some tips and insights into the assignment that's coming up. Remember that assignment isn't due until a week from tomorrow. Um, if you have any questions about your, your topic or the process, let me know. You can, we can talk about those on email. Uh, what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna walk you through a video. I would have done this in class normally, but I think it's effective if I do it on video. Uh, you can see and I can highlight some of the tips and techniques that you can adapt for what you're trying to do. Before I get to that point though, I wanted to talk about a couple of logistics things. First off, there is a new discussion post for today. Uh, make sure that you fill that out and make sure you do all of these. I, I'm really trying to keep these really simple and short, but these count for the attendance points you would have gotten if we were in class. So make sure you're doing those. If you need to go back and do some that you haven't, um, do that. All right, I wanna make sure you guys get the points for it. And this is an easy thing you can do. You also notice that I posted a discussion board for you to make a, create a question for Nolan Walker, our guest. That's a week from today. We're gonna to do it at 10.30 because I haven't heard any other objections. So hopefully most of you can be there. But if you can't be there, make sure that you post a question. I'll send out the Zoom link um, probably later today or tomorrow. As far as the discussion board for Tuesday, I thought you guys did a really good job. I really, and it makes me think I should do more questions like this that give you a chance to share your opinion and your insights into different concepts. But just to summarize some of the things that you said about why video was overtaking social media, um, a lot of you talked about the connection that it makes. You know, seeing somebody on screen is really important. That was great. Um, the accessibility of it, you know, having it there in your phones, um, but how it breaks down barriers, how it's maybe easier to watch a video than to read long text or something like that. That was really great. A lot of you talked about how it's easier to be creative in video. I wanted to kind of disagree with that, but I can see, I mean, there's so many fun and interesting things that you can try on video that just don't quite make the same impact when you do them in writing. So great point. One of you talked about, I thought this was really interesting too, uh, it goes back to some you know research concepts that I've looked at, but how we like to see ourselves on screen and maybe even vicariously see ourselves through others on the screen too. That's great, I hadn't really thought about that as one of the advantages of video, but we're seeing a lot of social video are doing that, are allowing ourselves you know, to feel like we're in touch with someone or on the screen ourselves, so that's really smart. Um, one of you mentioned that Without video nowadays, because it's become so prevalent, that you don't look professional without it. Uh, and that's something that I've really been trying to do even on my own personal pages, to try to post more video, maybe not of myself, but of other things that I'm shooting, because I agree with that. Um, one of you brought up um, Quibi, which is really interesting. I don't know if you've seen, but Wes Lowry is going to have a 60-minute style show on Quibi. Um, it's a new venture to post a lot of short content. I'm sure you've seen those shots of like Sophie Turner, the ads about Sophie Turner, or um, Chrissy Teigen's gonna have a courtroom show on there, and all the episodes are less than 10 minutes. So that's something that would be interesting, and I think they're all formatted in the vertical format too. So take, check that out when it comes out. I think it comes out next week. And then last but not least, uh, a lot of you talked about watching YouTube tutorials, and how sometimes these YouTube tutorials, you watch enough of them, you start feeling like an expert. I've definitely used a lot of my downtime in watching YouTube things um, on things that I'm definitely not an expert of. Um, I've watched a lot of UFC fights and um, you know tutorials about building things or using a lathe to make a, a lamp or a bowl out of a tree stump or something like that. I can't do that, but it makes me feel good. It makes me feel kind of manly to watch that. So I think that was a really interesting, great point. All right, so now we'll jump right to the video. Um, after this video, I'm gonna come back on real briefly just to give you a preview for next week. The video I've selected for this is a video that comes on Facebook on a site called Born Different. I think it's a good illustration of some of the concepts I'd like to see in your videos and some of the concepts that make social video really su successful. was basically born without a vagina. It wasn't uh, completely formed. One of the effective things that, I, that they start off with that I really appreciate in videos and I think is really vital for a social video is having a hook or a lead that really draws people in. When you see her talk about not being born with a vagina, that really draws you in and want, makes you want to watch the rest of the video. 
In social, when people are flipping through, you only have a couple of seconds to grab their attention. So try to find something in your videos that will do that. Either a short quote from the person you interviewed or some really compelling video that will grab their attention. It doesn't matter even if it comes kind of outside of the context or even if it gives away the punchline of the video. That's okay. It's most important to grab people's attention. Devin Merck was born with a rare medical condition called MRKH. I was born without a cervix. My uterus was a unicornial uterus, which is where it was basically a little dud. <laughs> a couple of effective things that they did here. First off, they used text on screen effectively. You can hear the narrator kind of talk through the video, but even without that narrator, you'd have the text on screen to serve as transitions between the different shots. And that's what I want to see you guys do. Second, I like the graphic that they use to illustrate kind of a complex medical condition that most of us probably aren't aware of and familiar with. And as you see, their illustration wasn't something that was super involved. It was really basic, but it helped to get that point across. One other thing that you can see right here is they use her name in what's called a lower third, just putting her name on screen. That allows you to save some time in your video from having her introduce herself. And this is something I see in a lot of videos from students where they'll have the person say, hi, I'm Devin Merck and I'm a college student. That's boring, that wastes time. You can easily take care of that with the lower third here. Now, as we watch further, let's see how they use B-roll or shots other than the interview to really emphasize the points and to add interest to what's going on. It wasn't uh, completely formed. Since the diagnosis at just 12 years old, Devon has endured many difficult surgeries to lessen the pain and to build her a vagina. At the age of 13, I had a hysterectomy. After that, I had my reconstructive surgery. Instead of having a fully functioning vagina, I have a man-made vagina. They had to make a vaginal opening for me so that I could have intercourse. It was difficult to have a boy. I hope you can see what I meant by the B-roll shots. A lot of times we think B-roll has to be something that's really uh, has a lot of movement in it or that's something separate from the interview subject. But here they were really effective in just using shots of the interview subject but outside of the context of the interview. So the close-up of her face, the close-up of her leg, the close-up of her hands. By stitching those together, it added interest and added motion to the video, and it wasn't just a talking head. And that's something you can think about, especially if you're not in a place where you can get video of the person doing something. Friend definitely ended some relationships fairly quick. <laughs> Five years ago, she married her husband, Trent. She's beautiful. I mean, the first time I saw her, you know, she walked up and I was stunned, you know. I know that this condition is really difficult. I think she feels guilty about it. I mean, she shouldn't be. No matter what, I'll still love her, you know, so. Okay, I think we'll stop there with the video. If you want to watch all of it, I'll put the link on Blackboard. But a couple of other things that I wanted to point out is you saw a really good moment there of the Sea Dog Show Dog. When they talk about her getting married, you see immediately that photo of her husband and then it cuts right to the interview with him that served as a really effective transition i think at the end of his interview too there was a nice emotional moment so when you're shooting leave the camera on let it roll a little bit extra because maybe you'll get those moments where people are trying to compose themselves or they're really happy and smiling about it and that doesn't always happen when they're talking sometimes it happens afterwards a couple other things that the video does that i want you to look at if you watch the rest of it as you see this is a video that was created for social so it's a vertical opening and they're really conscientious about how they're using that size and that frame. They make sure that interview subjects and photos are framed, even for something like this where the photo is in the middle, they have extra on the top and on the bottom. That's a great place to use your text as you create the videos. I hope that was helpful for you. I hope you learned a few things from the video. Um, be creative in your video projects. Try and do as much as you can, but stay home. You know, Don't do anything that's going to put you at risk of catching this illness or of infecting others with it. Since we don't have class time, I'm going to devote our virtual class time to that. So there won't be another video lecture next week, um, either on Tuesday or on Thursday. Hopefully Thursday you can be there for our live chat with Nolan Walker. 
Um, but I'm giving you really the whole week to work on your projects. The week after next, we'll start with a quiz and then we'll wrap up some of the projects that we're working on. Thanks again for your understanding. Thanks again for working hard and doing really great jobs with the discussion board. Have a great rest of the day. Bye.